Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning I want to talk to you guys about something that I know God is putting on my heart and it's probably more so for me also as well as for you but I wanted to share it with you and that is that um, to pay attention to God's supply system. I actually had done a podcast about this a few a few weeks ago about God's supply system versus the world's supply system. You and I as Christians we have been put we, we actually put our faith in world supply system versus God's and we're looking at a situation right now that is being uh, um, the world supply system is being put on on blast as they would say the young kids would say um, we are getting the chance to look at it and see seeing and observing the um, failure of the supply system there's a time coming that the Bible tells us that you and I are going to have to trust God's supply system versus that of uh, the world or what we are accustomed to we have put our feet in and I will show you that you and I need to come to a place to uh, that God is our supplier he is our supply system he is going to be the one that we will be looking at and looking to in order to provide for us the Bible tells us that you and I are now citizens in this new kingdom and as new citizens in this kingdom, the force or the power by which we are to govern our life and to live by is by faith. Um, we see that Jesus came to show us how to walk by faith, how to live by faith, and what to do with our faith. And we know that um, in the kingdom of darkness, that is governed by uh, fear. And uh, there's a slew of things that I've studied about what that lifestyle of fear, uh, faith in, within the kingdom of darkness is about and how their citizenry live and behave. And their citizenry has trusted on the system that they have, their supply system that they currently have, and so have you and I. But God is now, um, as we are being uh, shown, that the supply system of the world is unstable. And when it is unstable, it will not be able to meet much of our needs. So then we have to, as citizens that are in the kingdom of God, look to God as our supper, as the one that will provide all of our need. And uh, we are going to be put to that place. The Bible tells us in the last days that uh, this supply chain system uh, in order to be a part of it, you would have to take a mark of the beast. And we see that in Romans, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, it says, And that no man might buy or sell, save that he uh, that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So there is coming a time that uh, everyone within the kingdom of darkness is going to be stamped. Uh, you're going to have to re uh, receive this uh, this mark, this uh, identifying uh, piece in order to be a part of the system, the supply system that they have in the kingdom of darkness. Now, the Bible tells us that those who take those marks, that they are damned and that they will not enter into the kingdom of God. So there is a separation even coming deeper, and that separation is based upon supply system that the uh, kingdom of darkness knows that its citizens need, and anyone that is here on this planet, uh, if they are not in the kingdom of God, will have to uh, rely on that system to provide their needs. But the Bible tells us that it says, uh, my God, Philippians, says uh, that my God shall supply all of your needs. So then if you have need within the kingdom of God, the Bible says and he promised that he will supply our need. Another scripture talks about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all of our needs will be provided for us. So there's a different way by which you and I ought to approach our life and our mindset, our living as we are a part of this kingdom of God. And as a part of the kingdom of God, the Bible tells us that we have to operate differently. We have to then trust 
this king and the leader, um, the, the provider within the kingdom of God, and that is God himself. The Bible tells us, and I, I had a little conversation about this also in a podcast, and I believe this is the problem within the life of a believer. Um, Jesus makes a statement in Mark 11, 22, then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. And once you begin to have faith in God, then you will be able to access the power that is in faith to say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and so forth. Whose faith are you having? Have faith in God, in his ability to empower you, provide, uh, to move the mountains and move all of uh, the issues, the situations that come into our life. And so this um, judgment upon the supply chain, we're looking at some of the beginnings of it. We saw it earlier year where a lot of the supply chain were affected because of the pandemic. Uh, we saw that um, uh, lots of uh, items in the store were running out as, a, re as a, a, a result of that. Now looking at this war between uh, Russia and um, and the Ukrainian uh, people, and we're seeing, and many of us did not know that Ukraine was a part of this um, supply chain. And we are looking now and seeing that lots of grains and all these type things are coming from that country. We know that uh, in uh, in um, uh, 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 the Russians, uh, their supply chain was oil and and so forth. And so we see this uh, these wars. Jesus mentioned that in the last days that there will be wars, rumors of wars. There will be. Uh, um, disruption within the climate, climate change, and I know really arcs my heart to to have these so-called people that are Christians that don't believe in climate change. My God, that drives me nuts to even think about it because Jesus talked about the changing of the climates at the end of the age. He says we'll have earthquakes and, and all of these different things in all over the world and different places. So, um, And it is my belief that climate change began or started or began to magnify when the, uh, the flood happened and when the firmament broke and uh, so forth because we see at that time men used to live four, five hundred, nine hundred years old and then after that flood you could see within several generations it dropped from four hundred years down to a hundred and seven the years, 190 years that people thought that was a long when before that people were living longer. So I want to talk to you guys about this, um, that God said he will provide for us. You have to understand that in his um, uh, uh, um, his supply chain, God is a provider. We're looking at the Word of God and all it talks about, see from the beginning that God is a provider. And uh, we know that after Adam and Eve fell at, uh, in, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, we know that they needed, a God knew that they needed a Savior bring them back. And He provided one. He said He will provide one. In Genesis the 15, uh, chapter 3, verse 15, he says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and you shall bruise his heel. So we see that God uh, became a provider in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1. Uh, and he, we see this theme as he is his supply chain is different. We know that his supply chain was different when um, Abraham, uh, 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 when e Abraham had need, God provided for him. We know that uh, uh, when uh, we see, especially in the children of Israel, and I use the children of Israel as a metaphor for us uh, that are in walking uh, spiritual life. We know that naturally, E.G.'s God comes this group of people, and he's pulling them out, out of the world, Egypt, and we know spiritually that this group of people that God is pulling out spiritually, and I believe that Israel is a natural representation of a spiritual act that God is doing as well, and this is what he's using Israel so that you and I can see what he is trying to do by creating this family, this people, and um, he wants to bring this people to himself and make sure that they are part of his family. So we know that he has decided to become a provider. He says, I am your provider. Um, 
And as our provider, Scripture tells us as as new citizens within this uh, kingdom, in Isaiah it says, Isaiah 43, 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, or shall the flame scorch you. We know, people, from that Scripture, that we're going to go through some things. Uh, but what he is saying is that when you're going through these things, you are going to be victorious through these things because we are trusting in him as provider. And so we see that first he provided the lamb. We know that when Abraham went, when God was testing him with his son, you know, there was an incident where Jesus, God provided the lamb so that he didn't have to uh, sacrifice his son. So we see this provider theme, and this is showing us that God's supply system is much different than the world. Here are the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, and we know God looks at Egypt and he says to them, uh, the children of Israel, he says, you are going to leave this place and you are. I'm going to take you to a place of milk and honey. So he promised us uh, to take us from this place. He says this in the scriptures that God has delivered us from this kingdom, from the power of this kingdom, and he's uh, delivered us into this um, a place of milk and honey, which is heaven. So uh, it is the same representation, the natural, as I mentioned, that he's doing in the spiritual Around. So he's taking these people out of um, of uh, is, uh, Egypt, and now he has to prove to them, show them, not prove them, show them that he is their supplier and he is their God. And so takes them in. They walk to the to the Red Sea. They're looking around. They feel trapped in the natural realm. They're trapped. But God is the provider. He is the supplier. He is the one by which his system is different than the system of the world. So we look at him. The Bible tells us, he tells Moses, this is what I want you to do. And that represents obedience, faith. And then see that once he did what God told him to do, and the sea part, part, uh, parted and he walked through. That was his supply system. Then we see them get into the wilderness. The Bible tells us that they're there because their hearts are hardened. They are, they are there because of unbelief. Um, and we talked about what uh, unbelief is. Unbelief is when you differ from the Word of God. God is showing them their, their, um, He is their provider. He provided health. The Bible says that none, not one of them that was came out of Egypt, was, was there any feeble amongst them. Why? Because God says, I am the Lord that heals you, and that none of you shall um, have any of these diseases. So they came out, and God protected them. He provided health care for them. Um, where they didn't have any health care. So you and I, our system is going to have to believe that God is the one that will provide health care for us. He says, I am the Lord that heals you. So he says, um, in, uh, uh, here we are also as the, we're taking the children of Israel. They're walking in the, in the wilderness. They're complaining. They're hungry. They need food. So they're looking in the natural realm. And God now, as their supplier within his supply system, brings food from heaven, manna from heaven. We're, we're told in this, in the book of, uh, in the Bible. It says God began to feed them food from a different supply system after he told the servant Moses is what to do and so forth. So as we exercise faith, God is then able to tap into a different uh, supply system to provide our needs. So he provided food you know, from heaven for them. They continue to walk and then they said, oh my God, we've eaten too much of this stuff. We can't stand it anymore. We want some different food. They complain, they complain, they complain. God got so mad, he says, okay, I'll give him something. So the Bible tells us that uh, he told um, um, Moses what to do. I fade again, and he brought up, um, they're looking at it going, how is this going to happen? We're in a de desert. The Bible tells us that quail came, had so much quail, they didn't even know what to do with it. It was miles and miles of bird and, and meat that they had, and it tells us, that they lost their mind because they couldn't, God had lost his mind over them and that he provided. But I just wanted to bring you that story and show you that they couldn't understand that where uh, this food was going to come. Why? Because they did not have faith in God. They didn't 
have faith in God. And you and I are being brought to a place where we must have faith in God. Rely on His supply, that He will be our supplier, and that there's no way that we can do it except for Him. He said at, um, it says in Exodus 23, 5, it says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and He shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness for you from the midst of you. So here He is declaring that He is our help care system. He is our provider as far as our food. It says in Matthew, it says, God has need, he, he knows what you need, clothing and food and all of these things. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You are to walk by faith in your situation. He will tap into his supply system and bring it for you. Now we look at uh, other aspects of places where he supplied. I want to talk to you about Ruth and Naomi. He, they were here is this mother-in-law and her her daughter-in-law, and God provided Boaz. He is a provider. He provided this man to uh, to provide for this uh, this uh, uh, these two women. God is a provider. He, you don't know how he's going to do it. It's his responsibility to do it. Your responsibility, the scripture says, is only believe. Because if you believe, Jesus said, all things are possible. So you and I are going to be brought into this place where we have to add a different um, we have to look at God as our supplier, as citizens within the kingdom of, of God, within the kingdom of heaven, within the kingdom of God's dear son, because there is judgment that is being has begun on the supply chain of the world. And it is in a time, as the scripture says in Revelations 13, 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the name of his name, the number of his name. This is a verse about their supply system. This is not where you and I want to get our needs met from because the Bible tells us that if we do that, we are damned ever. So it is my hope that you and I start to sing our faith, start developing our faith so that we can extract what we need from God's supply system. He is the one that said he will supply it. We have to trust he will. So I want to thank you. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith and we walk by sight.